see I've already begun with uh, working on the slab the thickness of the slab is 0.6 centimeters and I'm actually cutting out the shapes using a set of concentric cookie cutters they are round um, and uh, they're really easy to uh, even pick up I mean you get these very commonly found uh, in uh, online stores and craft stores so now that that's done that's part of the necklace and I just cut out a rough piece for the uh, studs the stud uh, the thickness of the stud is going to be 0.25 centimeters and I'm going to be using a pair of cookie cutters to cut out two round shapes we obviously now that the entire thing is ready we can actually smoothen um, each of the pieces individually and once it's smoothen we can begin designing upon them I'm using a set of uh, again a cookie cutter uh, for getting the circular shape and then a pen cap using a fettling knife to do the designs and you can also use a regular nice knife uh, in case you don't have a fettling knife using a little nozzle over here you can also use um, a ballpoint pen refill for this purpose this one's a little hole maker uh, but you can also uh, use parts of a pen in order to get this kind of a design I think I've already shown you this um, how this can be done using a pen or rather parts of a pen in my uh, previous videos as well Now we end up repeating this particular pattern uh, on the rest of the pieces. Now that everything is ready, we can actually create the holes for each of these pieces. I am using a needle tool in order to do this. Please be careful, uh, be very gentle while doing this, you don't want to hurt your hands. Uh, also try and uh, make sure you don't end up with any cracks on the piece. The hole is basically made on the top part rather um, you know of the of every individual piece it's not made in the center it's made more towards the top I'm attaching stick beads to each of them and if you see the entire piece is ready we let this dry for a couple of days and then get it fired um, once it's fired we can actually begin painting upon each one of them I'm using uh, peacock colors I'm also using black uh, to paint this so if you see I've already laid out uh, the colors that are required to paint this beautiful set it's fired uh, and it's got this nice beautiful terracotta color I'm using 18 4 mm uh, small size round beads for this particular project the colors I'm going to be using are black gold and I'm going to be mixing uh, a little bit of pearl green or rather in this case festive green along with deep green in order to get a peacock green basically and then I'm going to be mixing pearl blue which is the peacock pearl along with dark blue in order to get the peacock blue the blue that I prefer uh, I rather like working with that uh, the brushes um, are just uh, basically a liner brush and a size a two round tip soft bristle brush if you see I've already uh, mixed the colors on the palette uh, that's anti gold by the way um, you know that's uh, that was mixed in the earlier part so I start off with a base coat of black on all of the pieces followed by uh, all the stick beads painted in anti gold using my liner brush I uh, start painting the details in blue this is the green this is where I mixed a little bit of the green uh, the dark green and um, very little dark green and obviously more of the festive green or the pearl green
to me when i mix uh, the pearl blue along with the dark blue it just intensifies the color a lot more uh, if you see uh, i prefer this color to uh, you know maybe if i were to use just the uh, pearl blue i don't think i would really like that color that much but this one does make a difference so try it out you know do try mixing a little bit of um you know blue along with dark blue along with the pearl metallic blue that you get in india and you'll see that it um it does intensify the color a lot more i mean believe me a little bit uh, actually goes a long way so please mix only a little bit to see and the same principle applies even to anti gold very very little black is mixed to the gold and you know it that's what i said you know it goes a long way so i'm painting all of the uh, little beads in black and like i said like i've shown you this earlier i use my hands to do this but if you are allergic to paints uh, please don't do it just paint uh, each of the beads uh, sing individually there are not too many of them and because it's acrylic they tend to dry very quickly now that um, all of the pieces are uh, dried it's time to varnish it this is the product i use uh, give it a good shake and transfer a little bit of the contents into a small bowl or a container and using a soft bristle brush uh, we apply a generous quantity uh, on all of the pieces on the beads i would be uh, painting or rather varnishing the beads only after it's assembled uh this applies only to these small beads uh, because because of the size uh, you know they are really small and it's very difficult to individually hold them and uh, you know varnish them so i prefer doing this after it's assembled Now if you see the varnish is also dried and I've taken a small piece of geo wire roughly about 10 inches uh, I tend to take a little bit extra I've also laid out a couple of other things that's required in order to put this entire set together these are a bunch of uh, really good quality gold beads I picked this up from um, you know a store in Bangalore way back uh, you know because I the quantity you get is pretty good and i you obviously see how much i have uh these are crimp beads so uh we'll need a pair of uh crimp beads and these are a uh, crimp covers i will leave the link uh, uh to this uh in the description box uh please do take a look at that and these are a bunch of uh, heavy duty rather a heavy gauge uh, 6 mm jump ring so we obviously begin by putting the crimp bead through the gear wire and then through the jump ring fold the gear wire and put it again through the gear wire uh, sorry crimp bead and then using a pair of pliers give it a press make sure you give it a good press because this is what basically holds the entire piece together obviously cover up that crimp bead uh, with a crimp cover when you start pressing on the crimp cover just be very careful you don't uh, you know do it very quickly uh, because it can sometimes uh, distort in shape so just be careful just be very slow when you're uh, pressing the crimp cover we assemble the piece like i said i'm using 18 uh, black beads and in between each of them i'm going to be using that tiny little gold bead we repeat the same process uh, at the end of it as well how we began the set is how we uh, end the set so i'm just trimming off the excess uh, gear wire there and the crimp lock rather the crimp cover <laughs> like i said do it step by step do it little by little so that you don't distort the uh, piece just br try bringing it closer together 
uh, making sure the bead is still you know intact uh, rather the shape is intact isn't that a pretty sight now that the piece is all uh, you know intact i mean the beads are not really going to move anywhere i can actually varnish each of them you can switch to a uh, smaller brush if you're comfortable doing that so now that the varnish again on the beads have dried it's time to assemble i'm using a 1.5 mm nylon cord over here a slightly different technique this technique can be a bit on the messy side uh, but it does look very nice so if you see i've just put the cord through the jump ring and taken out about uh, just a quantity under an inch this is an egyptian cotton cord which is about 1.18 mm in thickness it's a it's a pretty decent thickness cord and uh, quite soft quite nice in fact i'm going to be using the same thing for the tassels as well so if you see just hold it in place if you have someone to help you that's even better <laughs> at least uh you know you can actually grip it and you'll be able to tie your first knot make sure you do a double knot always just knot it twice because it's it, it has to be safe and secure like i said all of these is what is holding the necklace together <laughs> so just that's the first knot and then go on to add the second knot after that and then uh, this is very similar to a product like fevicol uh, in india so you just apply uh, uh, a little bit of that on the uh, cord on the nylon cord and then begin winding this wind it as neat as you can this does require a little bit of practice and it's a time consuming process and also a slightly messy process if you see i got like dried bits of fevicol Well it's not a very pretty sight but believe me after it dries uh, it would look okay. <laughs> Obviously when you come to the end of the winding part you just give it one more um knot. If you see it's completely uh, ready and uh, dried well. This is the bead that I'm going to be uh, using in order to um, put for the cord obviously this is the one that adjust the length at which you want to wear the necklace you've seen me do this so just use a bunch of pliers this can be a bit of a bit of a task but uh well it has to be done <laughs> this is a, a glue box the glue the same glue tube or glue bottle that i was using and it's about 4 inches wide and uh, i wind it around a couple of times and remove it very carefully and put it through the cord the nylon cord this is a gold wire uh, that i have rather sorry a gold thread and i just take a little bit of the gold thread in my hand and begin winding it around in this manner make sure that the winding is done very neatly and uh, you can actually use a very strong uh, durable nylon cord um, you know again sorry nylon thread uh, for this winding please remember that for for all of this winding process uh, the the cord should be strong uh, because you know everything is going to be stretched and pulled a little bit so you don't want something just getting cut off again once this winding is done uh, i do a knot uh, rather at, i do at least a two to three knots and then i again put a little bit of fevicol around it all of this basically dries transparent so it's you know it's not going to look ugly or it's not going to look all pasty uh, over there so i just cut off and um, well trim the uh, tassels just to make it look a little bit more nicer doesn't it already look pretty <laughs> Uh obviously I don't want to uh leave this particular end because if you see I've only put in one black bead. Uh so I would want to lock uh this as well, this portion of the tassel as well using the gold uh thread. So just wind it around again over there. You could also just put two wooden beads instead of one wooden bead and just push the uh you know the one more the extra wooden bead way up. So just so that the tassels are in place that's it again i did the same thing i just um wind it 
a couple of times uh, and then I attached it with glue rather I sealed it with glue and this is how the tassels look don't they look absolutely stunning and the set is ready it's obviously time to assemble the earring I have a pair of stud posts already ready and the glue that I use is E6000 um, once I actually attach the stud posts I let this dry for at least three days um, and uh, obviously that you know that's it that would be uh, that would be it I really hope you enjoy watching this video everyone uh, I am so happy with the way this set has turned out the colors look absolutely stunning and um, once again a very very happy Diwali to each and every one of you uh, thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for watching